So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to give you one of the best tutorials out there on how to complete the Voyage of Despair easter egg. And before we jump into things, if you do find this video useful in any way, I would really appreciate if you spent a second clicking that like button, as this has taken me at least 20 hours of in-game time to complete for you and get you a guide, as at the time of this video the map has some serious crashing issues, which has made it almost impossible to actually complete this easter egg. By the time you're watching this, that shouldn't be a problem anyway but I've got guides on my channel for the rest of the other zombies easter eggs which you can find down below in a playlist link and if you are new around here and you want to see more content like this then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now this is without a doubt one of the hardest zombies easter eggs that I've personally ever done and I really advise you to play this in a two or three man game. This is possible in solo but I wouldn't recommend it and four players can be incredibly hectic but if you do need to find some extra players to help you with this easter egg then I want you to use the comment section as an open discussion for you to leave your PSN, Xbox Lives or Battle.net names to help you find some players. Now from my experience this was best suited to a co-op game with two or more players. It is possible in solo but I would recommend that to make your life easier just because of how big this map is to play this in a co-op game. There are no prerequisites before starting this but I would highly advise that you run the Scepter of Ra as it's going to make some of the steps in this easter egg guide a lot more easier for you and make a lot more sense. Jumping straight into the match the first thing you want to do is open from spawn all the way over to the poop deck where we're going to retrieve the sentinel artifact. This is going to be a necessary item for tons of the easter egg including pack a punch and we can't start this quest unless you pick it up so that is the very first step and the second step involves you activating pack a punch which is four different pedestals around the map. Now if you don't know how to pack a punch inside of this map then I'm going to leave a guide down below in the video's description for you in case you don't know how to pack a punch. It's one of the most basic things you can do in the game and I'm sure every single one of you watching has a fundamental concept of how the pack a punch is unlocked on this map but in case you don't then it's down there. But once pack a punch has been activated you are going to want to visit six different locations around the map which contain a clock and now that we've activated the pack a punch machine four of the six possible locations have clocks where the clock time has changed. Now you'll know if one of the four total clocks are going to be the one you need as it's going to be a pack-a-punch elemental symbol that will spawn nearby and on your screen now you're seeing a basic alchemy chart showing you the four symbols that we're going to be looking for. So here are all the spawns for the clocks and their symbols starting with the mail room and the clock is going to be on the wall on the right side of the doorway here leading down to the cargo hold so we see the clock right there and and the symbol is going to be underneath the staircase just tucked away right there. The next location can be the captain's bridge with a clock that's right behind the nice. big four so dials so and the right. steering wheel. That's this clock is going good. to be right above the steering wheel but you need to be looking for the symbol as well and you're going to be looking for this symbol underneath a desk diagonally back right behind the clock. Another clock location can be here on the grand that's staircase something. and it's going to be on top of the staircase engraved in a wooden carving that's on the wall and the really symbol is going to be above a door if you so turn to the right and go up the staircase a little bit and it's right there. The next location for a clock and a symbol can be in the first class lounge. So this clock is in the middle of the lounge above a fireplace and the symbol is going to be to the left of the mystery box location here. So if you look to the left you will see the symbol on the right side of the wall. The next location can be in the galley and this clock is in the room with the body hanging on the wall opposite right there by this window and the symbol spawn can be to the back of the wall with the body on it and to the left on some cabinets and the final location is going to be in the third class berths and this clock is going to be on the wall here when going down to the turbine room and you get to the end of the wooden stairs there's a clock on the wall and this symbol is going to be behind some luggage next to the wooden stairs going up. Now of all of these six locations I've showed you in your game you're going to have four which will contain both a clock and an elemental symbol and you will need to note down the time on each clock as well well as the symbol. What we're going to be looking for is the 
positioning of the minute hand and the hour hand on these clocks. So in this game, looking at the grand staircase, we have a clock which has the time 11.10. Now, obviously in your game, this will be a completely random number, but you're also going to want to look for the symbol in this room as that will confirm a time that we need. So in this room, we have the air symbol on the wall here. So I'm going to write down that the air symbol time is 11.10. Now bear in mind in your game this air symbol might not be here they completely randomize every single game so you need to be looking for all four of these symbols i'm writing down what times they are but we have air which is 11 10. But as you can clearly see in this image this is not set to 11 10. we've got the little hand pointing upwards to 12 and this handle is currently set here which is five now the way this handle mechanic works on this specific set of dials in the bridge is that each time the handle is moved to the right or the left you're moving it by five minute increments so at the moment this is set to 1205 so we want the little hand to be one to the left obviously to be 11 and then this crank to be once more downwards to the right so that it will match 1110 now at the bridge with these cranks you can only control the minute hands here the hour hands are going to be in a separate location on the map so all you need to do here is go on all four of these dials and match these hands so that they match the minute hands of the clocks near near the symbol that is on the dial. The next symbol we nice. found yeah, was sorry. fire and that was in the captain's the bridge. So we noted down the clock time for fire as being 8 05 because it's five minutes past eight on this clock. The next symbol we found was the fire symbol in the mailing room. So we're going to go and check the clock time there. And this one is 8.05. So we write down fire as that was the elemental symbol in here and the time 8.05. And then we found a final symbol in the third class berths, which translates to the earth symbol. And the time on the clock here is 2.55. So once you have all of this information, we can begin with the next step, which involves Involves a load of different dials around the map. Once you've done that, we can move on to a, another section of the map, which is going to involve changing the hour hands. Now, down in the poop deck, we have two dials up here, and the one on the left is going to be responsible for the hour hand of whatever time you had for the air element. So, this on the left is specifically for the air element, and the one on the right controls the hour hand for the time that matches with the earth symbol. So, you just want to make sure that those are matched and so that way when you go back to the captain's bridge and look at the elemental symbol you'll notice that the dials will both now be set to the correct time matching the clock now we're going to have to head down into the engine room as there are two more dials which we need to match with the last two elements we have now in the engine room the dials on the left are for the time which matched your fire symbol so you want to match that up to the hour and the dial on the right Right is for the water symbol so you want to match the hour with whatever element you had for water and once you've completed that you'll hear a completion noise and we can move on to the next step now the next step involves us looking around the map for different power outlets in specific locations four of the six potential spawns for these outlets are going to all be spewing a different element one location for these can be inside of this window on the aft decks and if it's showing a element symbol then you have one of your four locations the next location for a outlet can be down here in the third class berths you just want to be noticing to see if it's sparking with any sort of different element the third one we're going to be going for is on the upper grand staircase and in our game here it was spewing out the poison element so we're going to keep a note of that but we're going to need a poison zombie for that one the next location can be here in the dining halls which could be letting out a element mental effect if it's not then do not worry it's not in that one and we can move on to a different location in our game that spark didn't have an element but we'll move on to another location there's a plug location in the state rooms and in our game this was sparking the electrical element so that's what the electrical element looks like and another plug location can be here in the first class lounge and this is going to be shooting out the water element now that we've gone over all of those locations there are going to be four of these which are going to be sparking with a 
different element and what your job is is to bring that type of zombie and kill it near the sparking plug. You can only do this once around so if you have a fire plug for example and you have a fire zombie near and you destroy it you'll notice that the plug will stop sparking and this weird symbol will appear on the ground. Once you've managed to get that to appear you have to go to the next round in order for the sparking plugs to reactivate again and then you're going to have to go around and wait until you have one of those elemental zombies spawn in and then take it over to the plug and kill it by it so that the plug stops sparking and it drops this weird symbol on the ground. We're going to have to repeat that for the whole four different sparking plugs which is going to involve you using a poison zombie which are the gas zombies, a electrical zombie, a water zombie as well as a fire zombie. Now I must stress you have to note down as well where exactly all of these elements are. So say example I found a sparking plug which was the electric in state rooms. Make sure you note down that the state rooms has the electric plug because there is a certain order that we're going to have to activate these new portals in order for us to get this step done correctly. Now once you've gotten all four of the different plugs to have stopped sparking and a symbol portal to appear on the ground we can work on the next steps but I must stress how important it is that you make a note down either on your phone or on a piece of paper or whatever where exactly each location was. So if electric was in state rooms then make sure you write down that the electric was in the state rooms because we're going to have to go onto these four pads in a particular order, so you need to remember what element is at what pad. So the order of this is we're going to be starting with wherever the outlet was sparking with poison that you have your portal. So all the players in the game must stand on top of the portal and hold square and you'll be teleported to a specific encounter which is going to be at the back of the poop deck. This is going to be a lockdown area where you're going to have a load of zombies as well as some blight farms which you're going to have to take out. Now this is a lockdown step you can't leave and you can't leave until you have completed this step correctly and when you have you'll notice your screen will go slightly grey and then merge you back into the normal map reality. Now unlike the step involving killing the elemental zombies by the plugs once per round we can go to these portals in the same round so if your team are equipped enough and think you're ready for the second encounter you need to head over to where the sparking plug had the water element and all players need to stand on that symbol and you'll be transported to a different section of the map which is going to be the cargo hold and you're going to have another lockdown sequence but you're going to be completely submerged underwater as the room is going to get flooded which makes it for quite a tricky experience. There's going to be zombies spawning from either side of the staircases as well as further down in the cargo holds underwater and guess what? You're going to get blight fathers as well so just be trying to take it out as much as possible and I really advise you to have the Kraken weapon as we're going to need it later on in the easter egg anyway but this weapon is perfect for these sort of encounters you just get it out the box or you can do it via a free Kraken easter egg and I'll have that link down below in the description but yeah we're going to need Krakens in this game as they are going to be extremely useful. Once you finish that encounter you will simply want to pick up the artifact and you'll be brought back to the reality of the map and we can begin with the third one where Ever you had the location for electricity you simply want to have all players standing on it hold square and it will take you into another room here which is a encounter which takes place outside which is very very tight so this one is going to be quite tricky this is why I advised you at the start to have the staff of Ra because if anyone goes down you can simply use that to revive people and they keep all of their perks and you can be working on getting level 3 on your special weapon as well which will allow you to place down a bubble to revive your teammates it's an absolute godsend but once that has been completed you've taken out all the zombies and blight fathers you'll have to pick up the artifact and you'll be brought back to the normal map and the last and final one we need to do is going to be where you had the sparking plug for fire so when everyone's ready make sure you have all the ammo you need you've got all the shields you've got krakens you want to go ahead and have all players stand on that symbol 
to be transported over to another section of the map. This is going to be in the engine room and you're going to simply spawn in and run up the stairs and the best method here is to have two people watching one side with two watching another. There's going to be tons of stokers which are going to be here and there's going to be a few blight fathers as well as zombies as well and I definitely recommend if you didn't have the kraken already this is going to be the one encounter which I really advise you to have the kraken because it is just going to be insane up there. Once you've completed that encounter you want to make your way back down to where you spawned and pick up the artifact and you'll notice now that there will be a new thing on the HUD that we need to complete and whoever has the Kraken now needs to kill a poison zombie so we get the decontaminated decay part. Now you're going to also need to have built the wonder weapon distillation kit. Now if you don't know how to build that then there is going to be a link down below in the description for how you can get all the parts but it's all built down in the engine room and you're going to need that decaminated decay which is going to give us a elemental version of the kraken and we need it specifically for this step. In the boiler room we're going to be looking for leaking blue pipes that are letting out smoke. What you need to do with the elemental kraken is to shoot these pipes so that they stop leaking and instead there is sort of like frozen water coming out of the pipes. There's going to be quite a few in the corners, there's some in quite dark areas and there's some above you which are really sneaky and here is how you can get every single one of these pipes but you'll know when you've got this step correct because once you've shot all of them the water will start rising in the boiler room and it will put out all the fires in the boiler room. Once that's completed you will need to place the artifact in the pack-a-punch machine. Now if the pack-a-punch is not in the boiler room at this point you might need to flip the round but at that point the pack-a-punch machine will appear and it will give you an option to place it in the pack-a-punch and actually pack-a-punch it. And once we've done that, we can move on to the next step. Now around the map, we are going to have to interact and activate a load of different symbols. These symbols all correlate to a particular planet. And once we have interacted with each symbol, you're going to notice a planet is going to spawn into the sky. It looks pretty amazing. So we're gonna start off by doing this in a random order. And you don't need to activate these in any particular order, just as long as you've gone up to every single one of these and held square so there is one in the forecastle which is the spawn and it's the sun symbol just chilling on the side of this pillar the next one we're going to go for is mercury which is in the mail rooms in this corner the next one we can go for is venus which is in the millionaire suite under this table the next one we can go for is the moon which is on the lower grand staircase on this wall then there's Mars which is in the boiler room and this one's a very sneaky one as you actually have to lie down and prone in order to activate this one. The next one is Saturn which is going to be on the bridge just here. Next one is Jupiter which is going to be in the engine room just on this box here. The next one is going to be Neptune which is in this little dinghy here on the aft decks and finally Uranus which is in the state room behind this plant in the bathroom. Once you've activated all of these symbols and you can see a ton of planets in the sky we can work on to the next step and we need to go into the cargo hold and lower the water and a box is going to reveal a model of the solar system what you want to do is you want to interact with this solar system model and you'll notice that all of the planets will flash one at a time now once this is activated you can activate this model as many times as you want to get this sequence but you need to write down or take note of the order in which they flash in and if you don't know what order the planets are from the sun then this image on screen should help as well as giving you a bit of a visual aid on what each model's color planet actually relates to in terms of each planet just in case you didn't really know your planets too well but I would warn you as soon as you interact with this solar system it's going to immediately trigger an infinite zombie round and it will not stop until either the step is complete or or if you fail the steps, you'll notice that you won't be getting any points from killing all of these zombies. So I recommend in the co-op game, have one player sort of train up in the spawn room so that they get the majority of the zombie spawning on the map. Therefore, you're not killing any, so there aren't going to be any more spawning. Upon activating this solar system model, it's going to spawn holograms of the sun and the planets appearing in the sky outside. 
Now the order in which your planets will flash are going to be different to ours, so don't pay attention to this, but I am going to show you what each planet relates to in our order so you can get this down. So the order goes Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Neptune, Venus, Uranus, Moon, Mercury and the Sun. And once you've gotten the pattern down of what planets go first, you need to shoot each planet in the order they flashed on the solar system model one at a time. And I must also give you some note that the moon is the actual moon. So in the sky box you're seeing the moon, that's for the moon. And also there is one planet which is Neptune, which is this blue one which is pointing downwards on the model. That does not spawn in the sky, it actually spawns in the water in the spawn room doing a small circular motion around the half of the map. But once you're confident that you have the exact planet order, you want to go outside and have someone shoot the planet that you think starts first in the sequence. This is going to shoot a blue orb which is going to fly from the sky down to the original location of the symbol that relates to that planet. On your screen now I have a text which describes where every single location is so someone in your game can be waiting ahead for this location and by shooting the planet an orb is going to fly down towards the symbol that we activated before this step and the blue orb should be in that general area. Now once a planet's been shot and an orb has made its way down from the sky onto the map you have a a very short amount of time to find it before it expires. The timer is extremely short so make sure you are quick or have friends in your game already waiting at each location before shooting the planet. And once an orb has been picked up you don't want to go ahead and shoot the next planet in the order and then the orb is going to fly down. Someone's going to pick that up and we're going to just rinse and repeat this process. You want to repeat this for each planet in the order until you reach the sun. The sun is always going to be the final planet. And if at any time you shoot the wrong planet in the sequence all it will happen is all the planets will disappear out of the sky and you're going to have to push towards the next round before you can go down into the cargo hold and reactivate that planet model to get the planets back in the sky and start everything again. Now there's only a timer between the planet being shot and you picking up the orb but you can actually go ahead and shoot each planet in its correct sequence in as slow or as quick a time as you want. There is really no rush. The only rush emphasis is on picking up the orb once it's landed in the map but like I said we're going to keep the sun till the final step so once all players in your game have an efficient amount of ammo you've got your special weapon shoot the sun and it's going to go into the spawn room and all players have to hold the interaction button on the orb which is spawned in the spawn room once all players have held the interaction button you'll notice your screen will go white and a timer will begin and you'll now notice that ice block will now block all the paths around the ship and you must destroy these blocks and make your way to the other end of the ship on the poop deck as quick as you can. Now this route that we're taking right here is the quickest route which is the right staircase from spawn and taking all right most ice blocks and using the staff of Ra is the most effective way that I've seen to destroy these ice blocks extremely quickly it literally melts them but also I recommend using the upgraded Kraken to destroy these ice blocks as well but you're on a timer and if you don't get to the other end in time your screen will go black and you will notice the icicles have disappeared and you failed that and you need to go and to another round before you can start it again. But once you reach the other end of the ship, you have to destroy the final ice block located at the very end of the poop deck near where you first got the sentinel artifact. Your screen will turn white and the red symbol from the first steps we've done involving the sparking plugs will appear on the ground and this will teleport you to the boss fight. Now at this point, I highly recommend that you all okay. get extremely Let's set up for this. Have all your your perks, make sure you've got four times repapped weapons, and this is where a very important thing comes in here. There's only one specific Kraken upgrade which is going to do any real damage to the boss which we need and that is going to be the water one. The other elemental Krakens are good for crowd control and for dealing with zombies but in order for us to do the max amount of damage that is needed in order to defeat the boss you're going to need the water elemental Kraken. This is a very very important step as this is the only thing that seems to really do enough damage in the boss for you to complete it efficiently. But once you're set up 
setup, have all players head to this symbol on the poop deck and hold square, and then you'll be put into the boss fight. So, this boss fight is, without a doubt, one of the hardest boss fights there's been in Call of Duty Zombies. It has not one, but five different phases. The first phase is gonna have you spawning underwater in front of a massive tree. And all you need to do is swim towards the tree and towards the artifact. And all players in the game have to interact with this artifact to continue. And what it will do is it will teleport you back to the boat and a giant iceberg will appear out of the water. And then a giant blue eye will appear. At this point, the eye is not going to be doing anything really to us and we can't shoot it. All we need to do is we need to just survive the onslaught of zombies. There's going to be a lot of zombies. There's going to be catalysts, there's going to be uh, stokers, there's going to be blight fathers, there's going to be a ton of things going on. But you do get given one max ammo and one carpenter which will refill your shield. So this one is not particularly difficult because the boss isn't going to attack you in any way, thankfully. After a few minutes of survival, you'll be teleported to the next area which will be the same onslaught but in the engine room. And I highly recommend as soon as you spawn in to run up to these stairs here and have some of your team on one side and another facing the other staircase and you can just take on whatever comes your way you're going to get tons of blight fathers and this is when krakens are going to be so so useful for you to slow down all of the zombies in here and to basically go ahead and kill them Having multiple Krakens in this boss fight is something that I can highly recommend, but just make sure that they're all the ice one, because that's what's going to do the most damage. And I also highly recommend as well that you try and all get homunculuses, because that will make your life a ton easier later on in the fight. But this phase will last for a few minutes, and once complete, make sure you pick up that max ammo and carpenter, which are going to be downstairs before we go into the next area. And this time, you're going to be teleported to the state rooms, and the eye is going to appear from different exits and use a ice beam attack if you get hit by this ice beam attack you'll be frozen and all you need to do is simply knife to escape from it but my tactic here is that all of our players hide in this room right here so we have a full lockdown of the zombies coming through either doorway we can place down the staffs of Ra if we need to to slow things down and revive people and you're basically going to be checking on either doorway to see if the eye has spawned and if it's shooting an ice beam all you need to do is just crouch out of the doorway and just fire a load of ammo into him and that's going to be the most effective way to damage him and that's all you really need to do is just continue this putting lots of damage into his eye during this, this ice blast attack until he's damaged enough and your screen will turn white and you'll teleport into the next area. The next stage is going to involve us being teleported to the side of the ship. We're going to have a load of zombies and this is going to be a very similar procedure. The eye is going to be looking around, it's going to be moving and teleporting around before eventually doing an ice beam blast and it's up to you to just simply put enough damage into the eye that you're going to crack it and you'll notice this progress happening as you're playing but you're going to get tons of blight fathers, tons of stokers, tons of all sorts of zombies so just bear in mind, keep that space, use that area wisely, and just fire off those shots when you know you have a safe chance to do so. There's a max ammo and carpenter which are going to be towards the front of this area, but once you've picked that up and you've completed that, the screen's going to go white, and we're going to be put on the poop deck for the last and final stage of the boss. Now this is going to be very tricky, because you're going to have an onslaught of zombies, and you're also going to have the boss shooting its eye beam attack at you as well. What you have to do is survive the onslaught and continue to damage the eye while it uses its eye beam but however there is one particular attack that the boss goes to do which can be an insta kill and can wipe out the entire team so you're going to be listening for a specific crying sound and that's only going to occur once you've put enough damage into him from him shooting his ice blasts around but when you know this is going to happen you're going to hear a loud noise and he's going to be in the back middle of the poop deck and he's going to be doing this charge attack where you can hear this noise and it's up to you to fire as much ammo into him as possible whilst this is happening and this is where the special water elemental kraken comes in best for doing the most damage to him at this point if you don't manage to do enough damage to him at this point then the white mechanic will happen where he will down all of you if you have perks like dying wish obviously you're going to survive that which is really really good and if you drop the staff of ra as a bubble shield during this sequence and you're inside it you will also be revived if you're inside it and even if you're not you can still crawl into it and revive you regardless if all the players are currently down on the game but this white 
mechanic is so crucial in this boss fight because if you fail to stop or avoid this attack, you will go to end the game completely. So you have to put in tons and tons of damage into the eye to destroy it. And you'll see after this certain wipe steps happen and you've done enough damage that the eye will start to be cracked and red and you know that you've done damage to him and it's essentially repeating the same phase again where he's going to be beaming around shooting ice beams at you and you just need to power enough damage into him during this phase that it will put him into the wipe mechanic boss step again where you're going to have to just unload so much ammo and do enough damage into him three times over at this point so that it will destroy him but once that is done you will have completed the boss fight and the cutscene will play and that my friends is the end of the voyage of despair easter egg i really really hope you guys enjoyed this and found it useful if you did make sure to leave a like rating and subscribe to the channel as well for more easter egg guides like this you can check out other easter egg guides on your screen right now but thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time